Have you ever wondered why doctors don't have to sell? And yet salespeople and business people have to sell their goods and services. But doctors actually sell something that's very critical. It's a big life decision for many, many of their patients. It's major life decisions. And a lot of the time, they don't have to sell it. They just have to tell them what they have to do. And the patient will say, all right, let's go ahead. And yet business people and salespeople have to convince and convert and objection handle. And it just doesn't seem like there's any balance between the doctor's way of selling and a salesperson's way of selling. Because really, we're all selling something. And so in this video, I want to show you exactly why doctors do so well and why they've really mastered the art of selling. And it doesn't even look like selling and why business people struggle. All right. So doctors. Uh, doctors are pretty amazing. Uh, even if you like them or hate them, you've got to admit they know how to sell something and that is health, okay? And uh, salespeople, on the other hand, they struggle to sell. And why is that? Well, I think if you look at a doctor and what they do to actually get a client to take action, it is uh, much more powerful than what the average salesperson does. So let's break it down. Initially, when you go to a doctor, that doctor is seen as an expert. So you walk into their office and you see them as an expert, whether it's the white lab coat or it's the degree on the wall, they're seen as an expert. So your mentality going into a doctor is very different to when you see a salesperson. And so I wanna encourage you as a salesperson, you need to build your credibility up in the marketplace. You need to build your business's credibility up in the marketplace. And there's an easy way of doing it. It's through content marketing. It's become the expert. When everyone else is a salesperson, don't be a salesperson, be an educator. Teach your market what they need to do to get the result that they want. And if you can do that through video and blog posts and content, when they sit with you uh, for the first time, they already know you. They would have already consumed some of your content and you'll be seen more as an expert. And this happens to me every day. For example, I had a client the other day who booked a call or a prospect who is now a client, they booked a call with me and they found me on YouTube. And so they found a video and they watched the video and then uh, they watched another video and another video and they ended up watching about 10 or 20 videos. And then at the end of every video, I said, why don't you book a call with me and it will help you solve this problem. So they booked a call. So when they got on a call with me, I was the expert in their mind. They had consumed my content you know, I was kind of wearing the white lab coat. I had the doctor's degree on the wall when it came to their specific problem. And you know, that sales process was so different. I didn't have to sell them at all. What I did was I just took them through my process. That process allowed them to make a decision to become a client, but they walked in with credibility. Uh, I had credibility in their head, in their mindset when they walked in. So that's the first thing a doctor does. You can do it too. Okay, it takes some effort. A doctor had to go to university for, or college for seven to 10 years and you've got to put a bit of work into that. The second thing the doctors do well is they just don't sell. They don't even try to sell. You know, they don't see their role as selling medication or selling a solution or an operation or, uh, you know, a, a, you know a, a regime of uh, health and fitness or, you know, whatever it is. They don't see their role as that. They see their role as solving a problem. Someone comes to them with a problem and they solve it. Now, during that process, they are selling medication from the pharmaceutical companies. They are selling a operation that they make a lot of money off. They are selling stuff. They just don't see themselves as salesmen and you should be the same. Don't see yourself as a salesman. See yourself as someone solving a problem for a patient, for a client. And there's two ways they do this really well. Firstly, they don't... Um, prescribe a solution before they diagnose the problem. So they diagnose a problem and then they prescribe a solution. And most salespeople walk into a meeting and they say, I know what you need. What you need is my product. But the reality is clients look at that and say, you're a pushy salesperson. And so what doctors do is they don't say, you need this medication, you need this operation. They say, tell me about the problem. And they'll spend 10 or 15 minutes trying to diagnose a problem and find the problem. And then when they feel like they've found it, then they'll prescribe a solution. They'll answer questions and prescribe a solution. And when someone feels like they've been heard and that the doctor understands they really have a problem, then they will be happy for that doctor to prescribe a solution. And, you know, 99% of the time, I'm guessing, people just go ahead and they say, okay, well, if that's what you say, I'll get that operation. I'll take that medication. Now, there are some instances where people get a second opinion with the doctor. 
And I think this is really important because when someone normally gets a second opinion, it's one of three or so reasons. The first one is they feel like the doctor doesn't care. They just don't care. Like they're a narcissist, they're a sociopath. They've done so many operations, they don't feel anymore. They don't see the person as an individual. And I think as a salesperson, your client needs to understand that you actually care about them and not selling your product. The second thing, second time someone would not move ahead with a doctor and get a second opinion is when they don't trust the doctor, they don't trust that they actually understand the problem, that they actually listen to them, that the solution or the diagnosis that they're giving may not quite be right based on the lack of care or the lack of questioning. There's something about the situation where the person just thought, I need to get a second opinion. That doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. And as a salesperson, that's why people say to you, well, I'll just have to think about it. Because there's something in how you've treated them. There's something in the way you've positioned your product ahead of finding the problem that they actually have, that they say there's something not quite right. And the last thing is they just don't like the doctor, I think. (laughs) They're like, I just don't like him for whatever reason. Sometimes they say it, sometimes they feel it. And that is something that if the doctor's done everything right, you have no control over. And with you as a salesperson, people sometimes just won't like you. And that's fine. You just got to be yourself and that's okay. But you can minimize that by showing that you care, by showing that you have the expertise. And so if you're a salesperson and you're sick and tired of selling and having an outcome that is variable and up and down, you want to you know, have a more consistent flow of conversions, Be more like a doctor. A doctor does not worry about conversion rate. A doctor does not worry about, um, is this person going to say yes? A doctor does not worry about selling the pharmaceutical products or selling the, the operation or the service that they provide. They don't. They're just there to serve. They're there to serve. They're there to save lives. And what are you there for when you're selling? Are you there to serve your prospect? The questions you're asking, is it showing that you're serving them? Is it showing that you care about them? Is it showing that you understand the problem before you prescribe a solution? It's really important that you get this right because when you do get it right, you don't have to sell anymore. You just don't have to sell. I I can't tell you how many meetings I've been in where one of the questions I ask people is, what have you got out of this meeting so far? I ask them. And so many people will say to me, Marlon, uh, what I've got is just... I've never verbalized my problems like this before. You know, I've, I've, I've never been able to think about it. No one's ever asked me the questions and I really appreciate your understanding of my problem. I really appreciate that it shows that you're trying to find the problem here and find a solution with me. And that blows me away because I don't work hard to do that. I, I follow a series of questions that the whole agenda of the meeting is to find their problem, is to find a solution that fits the problem. And people are stunned when that happens to them because so many salespeople are not about them. They're about themselves. They're not about the prospect. They're about you know, their own product and how they can force that on. Well, with me, I'm not trying to force anything. I don't try and sell anything anymore. I found out many years ago that when I try really hard to sell, things don't go that well. But when I'm there to serve in a meeting in this way and have a structured process of serving, not a process that's random and ad hoc and one day I feel good and I'm really nice and the next day I'm not as nice. No, it's very consistent. You need a consistent process like a doctor has a very consistent process. If you can do that, then you don't have to sell anymore. People will opt in. And one of the big um, benefits of this process is at the right time when you say, where would you like to go from here? What would you like to do? The client will say, well, let's go ahead. You know, I had a student the other day that said to me, they went, took a client through this process and um, this client, they had tried uh, three times to sell them a particular SEO service and they used this process um, on the fourth attempt <laughs> and they asked that question, where would you like to go from here? What would you like to do? And the client said something like, um, what do you mean what would I like to do? I want to go ahead. And uh, it just blew him away because he went from trying to sell to serve and the client said, no, I want to go ahead now. Just like a patient does with the doctor, I want to go ahead and find that solution. So I want to encourage you to, um, to if you want to learn how to uh, uh, you know, prescri- diagnose and prescribe as opposed to just sell, you can book a call in my calendar and I'd love to talk you through and see how we potentially can help you do the same. Okay, speak to you soon. Bye.